what else do we see on a typical pant? Well, let's um, add things on from necessary, from absolutely necessary to sort of bells and whistle. Um, most all pants have a fly closure. There are some exceptions for dress pants that might use a invisible zipper. Um, but for the most part, all the way around, you're gonna go ahead and see a fairly standard fly construction. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into the fly construction, the actual sewing of it, but I wanna get into how we draft the extra pieces that are needed to create our fly. And there are two pieces that we need uh, to draft in order to be able to construct our fly. And they are the fly shield and the fly facing. Okay, and they're, they're very related. And um, if you take a look at sort of your typical jeans or pants, you sort of see that little shape on the center front, that top stitching that creates the shape of the fly. Um, that is uh, um, based on your fly facing shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom in on the center front crotch seam, which is where our fly typically goes. Don't think I've ever seen a fly not on the center front crotch line, but maybe someday. I'm gonna protect this because I'm gonna use it as sort of a template piece. I'm gonna grab my uh, draft tool, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draft that sort of shape that we're used to seeing. Now, it needs to start a little bit below our full hip. Now, if you remember our rule, our rule is all closures, um, you know, for skirts, for dresses, and for pants too, need to open to the full hip to allow us to open up the waistline enough to fit over the hip and easily get the garment on and off. So I'm gonna start maybe down here, and I do not wanna remove that protection and I'm just gonna generally kind of give it that curve shape. Now, if you wanna give it a rectangular shape, that's fine. And I'm gonna kind of bring it up and I'm just gonna sort of parallel the uh, center front. And I'm gonna keep this at about an inch and a half to two inches. I want to keep it even. Oh, where'd that line come from? Oh, I know what happened. <laughs> I jacked it incorrectly. It came down from here. I should have done the whole thing. I want to take measurements first, though. Did I do okay? Is it pretty parallel? Yeah, it's pretty parallel, and it's kind of exactly the width I want it to be. It's about an inch and three quarters. But I'm going to do it again, I'm going to do it correctly, because I forgot half of it. I got two into the this side of the shape. But no matter because I'm gonna keep this about straight up. There like that. Now what I want to do is I want to finish it. So I'm just going to go along the waistline and along the center front crotch seam. and then finish digitizing. I don't want to give up halfway through. And that is our fly facing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and correct the grain line to align with our center front. So this line right here. And what I'm gonna do is I want to now create the fly uh, shield piece from this. Now the fly facing um, is used to attach one side of the zipper and also to finish the one of the edges of uh, the pants that open. The fly shield basically does the same thing but a little bit different. Um, so if you open your fly, you'll notice there's kind of a protective piece of fabric um, that kind of acts as a barrier between your underwear and the actual zipper of the fly. Um, that's the fly shield, and it's important because, of course, uh, those bitey little teeth can be um, quite bitey. Um, and so we use the fly shield not only to finish the edge, attach half of the zipper, but also to protect the zipper teeth um, from anything going on underneath the pants. And what I'm going to do to create the um, 
uh, fly is I first want to just sort of zoom in on my fly facing and correct the shape if need be, okay? So I'm gonna check to see that this is fairly parallel down to the, uh, so I'm looking for, going straight across, looking for roughly the, sh the same measurement all the way down. It's getting a little big here, so I'm gonna grab my move point tool and move it in a little bit so I get a bit of a straighter line straighter and more parallel to my center front line. Now see this curve is getting a little wonky, a little bulbous. I don't want it to be, I, I don't want it to go past this straight point. So what I'll do is I'll add a point here that will help me. Um, and let's make sure it's a curved point. And it will help me sort of uh, form and shape this a little bit better. So I'm gonna bring it in a little bit more. There we go. So that we have that nice straight line, a little curved edge here. That's perfect. Now, what I want to do now that my fly facing is perfect, I'm going to take this piece, copy and paste it. I'm just using Control C, Control V to do that. So our normal copy paste commands. And what I'm going to do is essentially our fly shield is the fly facing shape, but kind of opened up, uh, ha having its half symmetry opened up. So I'm gonna go to the set half, and I'm gonna set my half symmetry here along the straight edge. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the half. And there it is, there's my fly shield. So let's finish off these pieces, um, just so you guys know how they're finished off. So um, obviously this would be fly facing, fly facing, oop. Let me spell that right. And this is our fly shield. I before E K. Okay. And let's put in our cutting information. This is a new pattern piece. So what does our cutting and pattern information look like here? Well, we know the style number is going to be the same as all the other style number piece, uh, all the other uh, pieces in the pattern. Again, uh, every pattern piece has the same style number. Of course, it's a size A. Um, but what's the cutting information? We're going to cut one cell and it's an inter, it's a facing piece. So what do we typically see on facing pieces? Of course, that's right. We see interfacing. So we're going to cut one cell and cut one interfacing. Okay. This guy gets seam allowance all the way around and we're going to give him a nice half inch, there's a half inch here, so we're gonna give him a nice half inch all the way around. There we go. Now, uh, since we're on the seam allowance tool, let's give this guy seam allowance all the way around as well. Same half inch. And uh, what do his uh, cutting information look like? Well, of course, style and size are gonna be the same going to be the same cutting information. It's going to be cut one cell. And sometimes you can put interfacing on your fly shield. It's already kind of, when you create the fly, you're going to double this up. So you're going to fold along that line of symmetry, which um, if your fabric is thick or stiff enough, does not need interfacing. It does not need additional interfacing. However, if you're creating pants out of a sort of thinner fabric, a lighter weight fabric, you may want to include interfacing on this piece to give it a little bit of added structure and heft to do the job it needs to do. So that really depends on your the nature of the fabric you're using and how thick it is. Thick fabric, don't include the interfacing. Thinner fabric, do it. Medium weight, I don't know, it's your call. I'm gonna put it in. Actually, I'm not gonna put it in because we're gonna assume this is maybe like a jean or something that's made out of thick. Okay. And there we are. There's our fly facing and our fly shield. Now we have all the pieces necessary to create our uh, fly. Hooray! Let's take a look at some of the other things that we need. That essentially actually is all that we need. The only other thing that we need need is um, a waistband. Um, so I'm gonna do a waistband and it's pretty much the same as the skirt. The only thing that we have to consider 
is the fly construction. There's going to be overlap. Uh, and the, over, the amount of overlap is determined by your fly shield shape. So basically what happens is your waist or, or your um, waistband is going to come or all the way around and overlap just this area. So it starts at one center front and then it goes all the way around and it includes the uh, half of the fly shield shape. So what does this mean for our drafting purposes for our waistband? Well, essentially all we have to do is exactly what we did before uh, where we calculated the total width of the waist. So we can do that again. Now, I want there to be a calculator here, but there isn't one. No matter. I'm going to use my phone. You can't see it. Okay, so for the back waist, we have 5.5. Now, now remember, this is has to be doubled because this is only half of the back. So 5.59 times 2, um, it equals 11 and 18 inches. Okay, now let's do our front waist. Remember, I'm clicking the first point of a line segment, holding shift, and then clicking the last point to highlight the entire line segment, going into design segment length, and it will give me the measurement. And not only does it give me the measurement, but it gives me the measurement um, without the dart intake included, which is quite handy. Now I'm going to add 11.18 uh, uh, to 6.39. And then I'm going to add another 6.39 because, of course, it's half the front, too. And that gives me um, uh, 24 inches. Rather small waist. I'm kind of thinking that this, this skirt slope, we were using the other skirt sloper before that I handed up and the other bodice sloper. I'm kind of thinking there's a little bit of something wonky with this uh, pant sloper. It's kind of small for our waist. I'm wondering, hold on, let me just double check my measurements here, make sure I was clicking where I should have been clicking. Um, I'm going to recommend that you guys use the skirts, just the skirt sloper, the one with two darts in the back instead of this one to draft and use, um, just because I'm finding some kind of little bit of wonky issues with it. Okay, all right, fine, that's what it is. It is what it is. It's a slightly small waist. It's a little bit too small for a size 8, to be quite honest. All right, it is what it is. No use in changing it now. Just got to have a, go on a diet, fit in the 24 inches. 24 inches is a rather small waist. But in any essence, the uh, way we draft it is the same. And again, that's why it's good to measure uh, based on your pattern, um, as opposed to just relying on measurement charts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure half of this, or I can measure just the fly facing because this should be the same measurement. And I'm going to add that to my uh, uh, waist measurement or for waistband measurement. So that's one, uh, let's say 1.8. So that is going to give me 25 and three quarters inch for my waistband. Okay. So again, just long story short, we want to in, uh, measure the entire waist uh, circumference and then add the top bit of the fly facing or half of the fly shield. I say half of the fly shield because really the waistband is attached to the fly shield and not the fly facing. That's what creates the overlap, but it's the same distance anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to do piece, new piece, create rectangular piece and uh, type in my length that I just calculated. 
and double the width that I want, because remember it's gonna be folded over, so if I want a one and a half inch waistband, I'm gonna make it three inches. And boom, there's our waistband. Let's label it correctly. And add seam allowance all the way around. I'm gonna do half inch, matches the half inch we put on the waist seam for the pants. There we go. And let's add some pattern info. Of course, same style number um, for all the elements. And same size, of course. And we're gonna go ahead and um, cut oneself. And again, sort of same rules apply here with the interfacing. If you're using a thick fabric, you don't need to interface your waistband, but sort of light to medium weights, you might want to consider it. Definitely light weights, you do want that interfacing. So it's going to be up to you how you, what you want to do for your um, interfacing pieces. Again, dependent on what kind of fabric that you're using. There is our waistband. And all these elements combined would create a finished pant. Um, so this is all we really need for a finished pant. I can put all these pieces together and, and create a functional garment. Um, from here, we're going to look at some of the bells and whistles. So that will include pockets um, and uh, uh, creating, playing around with the yoke seam. Now, we played around with the yoke seam a little bit on the skirt, um, but it's not truly a skirt element. It is truly a pant element. You can see them on skirts and you do see them on skirts, um, but um, you will always, 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 always see like a jean pant construction with yokes. So we're going to come back and we're going to add some pockets and some fun things to that um, uh, on Thursday. Uh, so I'm going to sign out. Let's save this. Always save your work. And I'm going to sign off and conclude today's lesson. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye-bye.